young singer named Justin Moore. We don't do a whole lot of bullshitting up here. We just get up here and play country music. The Justin Moore Podcast is sponsored by Bobcat. Visit them at bobcat.com. All right, everybody, welcome back to this week's episode of the Justin Moore Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. I'm your old trusty co-host here, Jr. The Handler. With me always, the namesake of this podcast, the one and only Justin Moore. What's up, JM? What's up, guys? Guys? Guys. I say guys because we're about to have a ge- another guy uh, yeah. but, uh, as a guest. Uh, nothing, man, just getting ready to hit the road uh you got to leave a little earlier than me but we're both leaving this evening uh heading up to basically just south of chicago i, I believe if i'm not mistaken and then somewhere in kentucky and do we just have two shows this week just two yeah we've got um, we come home saturday rather than sunday right we the i show didn't even kentucky. realize that until today so, yeah, the show in Kentucky, um, and I've said <clears throat> Connecticut on here a few times. It's New Haven, and I've been uh, I've been blasted for saying uh, Connecticut. Sorry about that, but it's New Haven, <clears throat> Kentucky, which I think is about thirty minutes south of Louisville. It's uh, there's a big distillery okay. out there with an amphitheater. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah, that'd be really cool for the guys on the the yeah. band bus because they all weigh into the. Oh yeah, and the, te- the testing. I, it's not I got really the my testing, thing, but. Yeah, I got the testing set up between like two and three, so maybe if anything does go wrong during that, they'll have time to get their wits back <laughs> together back before showtime. <laughs> so hey, uh, you, you're not big into bourbon either, are you? I mean, I like it. I like to drink. Oh, but I'm you not, do? Yeah, but I'm not overly. Uh, you know, I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm not. I'm not that way with anything. I'm not a. I don't have that kind of palate. I just like it. It's all pretty good to me. I'm pretty yeah. easy to please. I don't know why. I've just never gotten into that. Yeah, I like me. You know me, a Manhattan at the restaurant. Oh, yeah. I guess that is bourbon, isn't it? Yeah. And then a little Covathier on the way out. You know how I roll. Oh, yeah. That sounds good. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Oh, yeah. The good kind. Thank you. Um, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah. Well, you tried uh, yeah, to hold me up, and that's not cool. <laughs> yeah. Talk about leaving today to get to these shows. I may have to uh, get the boat out of storage because, uh, buddy, it is raining down here. I hope we... Uh, so far, I got good internet, but yeah, it is. I just ran my cable and all that stuff in a monsoon out here. Really? Um, yeah, we're I getting saw some good th- bands right now. Pretty good. I saw that yesterday. I was home doing a lot of uh, press stuff, as you know, um, for um, sing our current single with the woman you love. And as we're trying to uh, get that to the top of the chart, I've just been doing a bunch of interviews. <laughs> and I just keep the news on or the weather channel on or something in my office while I'm doing all that. And uh, notice from basically about where I live, like almost exactly where I live in Arkansas, straight down and east of us. I mean, it just it looks like it's just sitting on top of everybody. And we were supposed to get a lot of rain yesterday and today, but we haven't. So maybe it just went south of us or something. I don't know. But it, I mean, like the flooding and. Have you yeah. seen all the flooding in Texas? That, yeah. Well, Grand is in Jackson. You know, I talked to her, and she said, oh, yeah, it's been raining for a couple of days. And she said it's, it's all hard. It's it's flooding around there, too. She hadn't seen yeah. anything out of control yet, but they're talking about six, eight more inches there today and stuff. Man. Yeah, Dal- our thoughts and prayers go out to yeah, the folks for sure. out there dealing with it. I mean, Dallas is west of me, almost due west of where my house is, four hours and I guess it just hadn't made it that far east, or when it did, it dipped south further. Yeah. But, man, I mean, were, some of the imagery on TV is is yeah. crazy, well, man. They had been in a drought, so that means the ground was real hard and it soaked it up, so it was like hitting pavement when all that rain came. <clears throat> That's just, a good point. Yeah, it makes it bad. That's what we're getting yeah. a lot. Dave, actually, our bass player called us called me earlier um, and uh, asked me about was I getting it because he saw on the news or, you know, the, the weather thing, and – I said, yeah, we've been getting it steady, but we we get so much. Our ground, we're just, you know, it's it soaks it, it in. It's soaking it up better. Well, it, and, it, I tell you what, man, I saw I was watching the um, the weather yesterday. It was yesterday or the day before. I think it was yesterday, but and um, the the guy doing the weather report was just talking about, man, this is like three, four, five thousand, one in a thousand year floods um, here in the last just handful of months when you consider 
Where were we out west where that happened? Uh, um, up in Yellowstone, north of Yellowstone. In like Colorado, Montana area, something Idaho, like that. Oh, yeah. I, uh, I forget exactly where we were, but that area. Yeah, Red, Red Bluff, Montana. <laughs> Red Bluff, Montana. Montana. Um, yeah. Kentucky recently. Oh, yeah. um, now Texas, and I'm I'm leaving one or two off, but yeah, it's kind of well, wild. Arizona, man. New Mexico, Arizona, New Mexico got the first wave of this that went through Texas. Okay, it there got you go. People bad over there. there. You go. That's yeah. what it was. Yeah, and man, you it, know that ground's dry. Yeah, it was people missing in these state parks or national parks and stuff. It was bad out of nowhere, flash flooding stuff. Yeah, yeah. and I'm serious. Uh, like even getting out of here today, I'm thinking about the route as much because the ditches are full. When I went and got lunch earlier, <clears> so. Um, I'm going. I think I might drive up to the interstate and go over and just stay the big roads as much as I can. It's going to take me another thirty minutes, but uh, you know, some of these back roads between here and Pensacola is pretty low out in the right. country, and it floods pretty. A lot of it's new development too. You see where they're building new apartments or new building or something. It takes right. a minute for them to figure out how they got to get the water to disperse right. And it'll, you know, I just don't. Oh want yeah, it stuck which way to move it and how yeah, to they get got, it there after they make the new parking lots and they they have a plan but it don't always go accordingly and you know the more stuff you got and the less ground but yeah. uh it's let up for a second i know we got more bands so hopefully we hold we hold up but um yeah talking about uh talking about our guest today i thought about mm -hmm. uh, we were talking the other day and we've got a couple other guests lined up um for the next several episodes and next couple months uh here and there uh, but we had a we had a thought we should bring this guy on because we just saw him a few months ago. I'm gonna send him this link now. Uh, we just saw him like a month or so ago at Dewey Beach. We had a blast, and um, he, as far as knowing what's going on in country music, I don't know if anybody knows him more. I get a lot of my tips from him and all my a lot of my info you know, because of uh, because of. Uh, the, no, I don't. I don't think anybody knows more. You know, or at least as least in the mix as as, as much as he is, and uh, for for somebody as many. Uh, country stars and, and and figures we've had he's not necessarily one of those but he's made his mark in country music i mean hell he's brad paisley's best friend <laughs> yeah, yeah right <laughs> you know? and brent yeah. long I know, we'll, we'll talk about that i know brent's listed you know we're gonna bring you up brent but uh but um i thought it'd be fun to have him on because he knows a lot <clears throat> of the stuff like that we the people because you know we've been busy all year and we haven't done shows with everybody and there's a lot of people out there hot and rocking that we haven't played shows with so I wonder how many he'll... shows he sees a year, too. That'd be interesting <laughs> to see. But he's the, uh, I don't know, what is it, the founder, owner, CEO? Yeah. I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, we can ask him. Yeah, that's what I was uh, thinking. I'll let, I'm going to let him give <clears throat> give the, the description. But he's, uh, he's yeah. as far as this new wave of uh, social media and, and the way people cover uh, this industry and this genre, uh, he was kind of on the forefront of that several years ago when he started this thing as a tip sheet. I don't know sheet. that he wasn't the first. As I mean, far as kind of getting it all is. together, I mean, there was other pages, but as far as getting the the industry side, as far as you could get as a pub as a public person, now you know we get some insider uh, mags. Right? And, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm stuff, as, but, from a fan perspective, though. Right. But, but he's uh, with uh, he's with the. Uh, I'll let him tell you. He, yeah. He, he he can he can be uh, much more articulate than we can. Absolutely, and you know, I tell it's his you, like, job to be more articulate. Right. Than us. Hey, and I and, and I don't know outside of maybe a handful of like the 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 super superstars we've had on here. I don't know if you could Google anybody <laughs> and get more results than you might for our brother Kurt. I don't know if that because if you Google <laughs> really? Kurt, there, yeah, oh, he's uh, of course it, turn the TV on. He's probably on two other channels that. right now. So oh, yeah, uh, yeah, with. <laughs> I what you what his his I don't know avatar or whatever that popped up was him in a suit. I thought it was literally him in a suit <laughs> in, in between, between interviews. <laughs> yeah, I got to talk to the president in a minute, you know. But uh, yeah. but uh, I got time for you knuckleheads. Yeah, without without any further ado, we've talked him up enough. And we we're gonna let him give you more of what goes on. But this is the founding father of the Morning Hangover, the Daily Tip Sheet, and Country Music. Kurt Bardella, our dear buddy, been friends for I mean, how long have we known you now, Kurt? How long, give us the give us the give us the scoop, Kurt. So, first of all, thank you for finally having me on this <laughs> podcast. I've only been trying to get on for like five freaking years. I feel like, <laughs> my God. Um, we first met, and actually, you know, the story of the morning hangover has such a tie in with, you know, our friendship. Um, Justin's was the first tour bus I ever got to go on in my life. Uh, how did, and it was just, how did I forget that? Um, and it was because of, um, and she's no longer working there, but MTK at, at, over at the at Big Machine was working that show in Bristow, Virginia. 
and uh, she was the one who who in, you know invited me to come on, and uh, that that that's the first time I met you, and, and this was, God, I think this is the summer of 2017, um, and I expected it to just be a quick, hey, we're gonna hop on, I'll say hi to you, great to meet you, and, and you know get on your way, and we ended up just shooting the shit for you know two hours, yeah, um, which MTK told me afterwards, I was like. I was shocked you didn't come and pull me off the bus after like five or 10 minutes. It's like, you know, <laughs> Justin's the kind of guy that if he doesn't want you on the bus, he'll let you know. <laughs> so you had, you had or had not started uh, the hangover by, at that point, or was it right at the started early it. stages? It was, that was the like first summer that it was, that it had yeah. started. I and, was because I remember correct. I was intrigued. I was like, "Huh? Explain." Yeah. <laughs> well, correct me if I'm wrong, Kurt. But I mean, it did, did it began just kind of as a hobby for you, didn't it? Oh yeah. Or am I, I mistaken? No one, no one is more shocked that this became an actual thing more than I am. I right. started it, and, and here's the real backstory. Um, and, and I and I I've, I don't even think I've ever told this publicly in any way. When I first got the idea for the morning hangover. It was uh, on June 17th. I know that because it's my wife's birthday. And for her birthday, I took her to a concert. It was Rolling Stones in Nashville. They were playing LP Field. And as a special thing, because it was Nashville, Brad Paisley opened for them. And I was talking to people who were sitting around me, and, and a lot of them worked in the industry. And I just asked them, hey, what do you all read to know what's going on in country music? As a big fan, I'd like to read it too. And they had the trade publications, things like All Access or Air Check. But as a fan... I could care less who the PD in North Dakota is. Right, like, that that right. doesn't mean anything to me. Yep. Uh, I didn't even understand the language of like song is impacting now. I'm like, does that mean it's doing good? Like, I don't know what that means. Hey, Kurt, let me interrupt you just sense. for a second, but just to even dumb it down even a little bit more to our folks listening and watching that may not even know what a tip sheet is. So I can explain that or you can it, 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 in just interwoven uh, yeah, with your yeah. story. It's just a, a daily morning email that tells you the brief things about what's going on. Just quick hits instead of having to go to different websites and tracking down information and reading news articles. It just gives yeah. everything you need in a very condensed format. Yeah. So, for uh, for example, the radio show that I'm on, everybody listening, we get that daily. And you may pick out two or three things that you want to talk about. Or maybe there's nothing. But at least you don't have to spend all this time seeking out all this information it, it it allows your prep time to be uh very minimal yeah yeah so that, anyway i just wanted and, i don't i didn't I, I i didn't know if there may be a lot of people out there listening who didn't even know what that was so yeah yep you know and so i wanted something that was more fan facing and content something that just told me what i would want to know as a fan of country music who put out a new song who put up a new video who was hanging out with Blake Shelton on a tour bus? You know, just cool things that you don't that fans may not be able to see day in and day out. <laughs> and I I pitched the idea to CMT. I told them, you guys should do this. I would read it. And they basically they blew me off. Um, and which which kind of annoyed me because I'm like, hey, I'm not some jerk off like moron. Like I'm a pretty smart dude. Like this, You're is, right. this is not a right. stupid idea. You're right. Uh, and so out of spite. I started. I created the morning hangover as a what if experiment that I thought in my own probably ego. I'm going to do this for like two weeks. CMT will see this as a good idea, and then they will do it, and I'll never have to think about it again. That was my master plan. Mm. And much to my shock, when I when I put it out, and, and the first time I put it out, I didn't put my name on it. I just called it the morning hangover. I went to LinkedIn and I just typed in Sony Music Nashville. Warner Music Nashville got a list of names, and I guessed everybody's email address, and no just created, kidding. I, and then it just created a distribution list. Um, and I thought one of two things would happen here: either one, whoever gets it, they're going to go, "What the hell is this?" and delete it, or because the content presentation was so good, they would go, "I don't know what this is, but it's pretty good, so I'll keep reading it." And I started seeing it move around the office because I could see who was signing up for it every day. And, you know, all at once you get like 25 people at Universal signing up for it or 30 people at Valerie signing up for it. And I realized, oh, they're passing it around their office saying, you all should check this out. It's pretty good. 
And so I'd let this go on for like a month. And then I eventually revealed that, hi, I'm Kurt Bardala. Mm. I'm the guy that does the morning hangover. I live in Washington, D.C. I don't work in the country music industry. I'm not in Nashville. I just do this because I'm a big fan. Uh, and everybody was shocked. I mean, I learned later on that there were all of these side bets over who it was. People thought it was someone in country oh, radio. Oh, no kidding. Oh, yeah. There was a big wow. guessing game. People thought it might be someone that was like an artist trying to break into the format and doing right. this as an in. Uh, there were people like the, the disgruntled employee who got fired from a label and wanted wow. to like do their own thing. Right. Uh, no one had. Ima- imagine now if you, you know, still had that going. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, right. How funny could, that would could, be. Yeah. You, you're the Banksy <laughs> of, a- uh, of Intel. <laughs> Oh, that would be that would be hilarious. Uh, but yeah, it, I, 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 I unveiled that it was me. Uh, I went out to Nashville uh, the next weekend uh, just to meet different people, and uh, you know, and, and it kind of took off from there. It was, it's been the most rewarding experience of my professional life. <laughs> That's and awesome, it, man. And I love it. Like I, we were talking about that beforehand, before you came on, that there were things like Justin and I saw, like you said, Air Check and these different kind of publications, but it wasn't for mainstream. And what mm-hmm. you put out there is something like everybody does now for their for their news, um, but it's just a tip sheet. It's who's playing where, whose album's <sighs> coming out when the next month or so. What I mean, just the basic the things you need to know. I use it daily. I'm not even playing, you especially know, you on know. here too. Oh yeah, for this I mean, yeah, but just on the road, it's my, one of my morning things just to know, so I don't forget. And definitely for this, I use it all the time with album drops and stuff like that because I know you're going to have it listed, like you said, instead of me having to go to everybody's website and see who's doing or right. find that out and uh I, you know i i'm a huge fan of it and there's been so much more um so many more outlets doing information for country music not necessarily that same format but different things and i have to say you had to be on the forefront of uh, of putting that stuff out there together because 17 we got to think it seems like the stuff the world we live in right now has been here forever but in 17 it was not as TikToky as it is now you know what i mean oh, yeah. it was, no, it was a little different sure. world even five six years ago <clears throat> so um so yeah that was the that early on and like you said too it was such a pleasant palette to scroll up through that was boom 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 there was no click link uh advertisement uh, thing flashing you know all that stuff uh or you know or a big picture of your face hey you know vote for me <laughs> you know it was just <laughs> here's the, it was just here's the info which i love it and uh we're gonna make sure to let everybody know it if you don't know about this already but um when we just now we're talking about this the other week about seeing if you wanted to come on um, I was first. I was like, I don't know if we can uh, get him and Paisley uh, broke up long enough for him to come on the show because I know they're BFF. <laughs> oh they sh- my god! They share bunk. Uh, how many activities can we do? Uh, hey, and shout out to our buddy Brent Long because you know he's listening. Um, you know, I saw uh, him last night. I did you really? Uh, you know, I, you know, I'm here. I'm here in Nashville right now because it's uh, they're doing the uh, ACM Honors tonight. They're filming oh, okay. that. It'll air in September on, on Fox. And last night they had ACM Party for a Cause at the Ascend Amphitheater, and uh, Brad headlined it actually. So I was oh, with him very Brent cool. Long just very last cool. night. Old school Brent Long, as I call him. Oh man, he's the best. He's, <laughs> he's the old best. Old school. Yeah. Old school. Still uses yeah. paper and pencil mm. on, on yeah. stuff. That's what he would say. You, you can't hack paper. Yeah. yeah. We had talked about it, that exact thing, I don't know, a month or two ago, about because you had talked to him about for something. And for those out there listening, we're we're talking about uh, Brad Paisley's longtime tour manager, who we we all know well, and he's a character, a great guy. And uh, but he he doesn't use a computer. He does. He's just old school. You, know, you literally anything and everything he does for the Brad Paisley tour, which there isn't a tour bigger. I mean, in country music, he does with a pe- a pencil and a paper or a pen and Sharpie. paper. It's just, you know, it's awesome. <laughs> It's, uh, I mean, it's funny too actually the first time i ever saw you as a performer and this was just as a fan it was when you were on that brad you were direct support for brad's tour it was like was that the h2o like tour yeah or was that the one, like that. one after that because we went out with him twice uh was it the one where the, they did the duck hunt that, on the screen yeah i think the yes. h2o tour might have been an earlier one where i was there was, yeah, the yeah duck hunt on the screen i remember that yeah but yeah um yeah, that was a lot of fun to go out with him, man. He just great people, the, the entire camp, just great mm-hmm. people, which you know. And and how did that relationship come about? Because Jr. was 
halfway joking, but not yeah, really. I was just when playing, he said I earlier, you, I knew he, you were in Nashville, he, but he was like, with he's me basically today. Brad Paisley's best friend. So how did that relationship? I wouldn't come say about? that, but uh, you know, again, it was one of those happenstance things. It was very similar to our friendship. Um, he was playing Bristow, that 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 amphitheater that's now uh, used mm-hmm. to be called Jiffy Lube Live. It's called yeah. something else now. I can never remember. That's right. Um, and his agent at the time, who's now his manager, a guy named Rob Beckham, uh, yeah. was a big fan of the Morning Hangover, and just said, "Hey, come to the show, and you'll get to. You know, I'll make sure you get to meet Brad." And I'm like, oh, "Okay, that sounds cool. That's that'd be awesome." And I met Brad before the show for about three seconds, just you know, saying, "Hi, I'm Kurt." Whatever. And then in the middle of the show, Beckham texts me, says, "Hey, stick around after the show." Uh, Brad still wants to keep talking to you. I'm like, "Oh shit, really? That no kidding? Okay." And we ended up talking for about an hour, just sitting and catering after the show. And then, like a week and a half later, I had come out to Nashville for something, and, and I get uh, a call, and, and, and you know, and six one five area code, of course. I'm like, oh, hello, and he says, hey, Kurt, it's Brad. I'm like, Brad, who? I, I, I don't know who this is. Uh, he's like, it's Brad Pace. I'm like, what? Oh, what's up? He's like, well, I heard you're in town. You want to come hang at the house? I'm like, yes, I do. And. Uh, <laughs> went out to he has this great bar set up uh, at his house it's amazing i mean the guy is like truly there it's like an alcohol almanac of all kinds of unique liquors and whiskeys and uh, it's really something and brad's not even a, a drinker has. so to speak not a big drinker um, uh, not a but, big drinker yeah but he he just he has such an encyclopedic knowledge about different whiskeys and bourbon it's really like it's like a hobby for him actually yeah. And, and I think that's uh, with him. That's most stuff because he's that way with music. Yeah, you know, he is a, that way. He's a yeah. real. He's a a, a, he's studied a historian. Guy. And yeah, of our genre and, and just music in general. And his where he's from. And you know, any he, he's you know, I could I could <laughs> totally see that if he's into that. Yeah. That it's it's full tilt. Yep. And so we're just like you know, the, and this is the one thing that's so great about the country music format that I found personally is that only in country music. Could something like this happen? You could actually become friends with these artists that you've you've looked up to, that you've you know gone out and been a fan of, and it, like what you see is what you get. And, and you know the artists, these things that they sing about, small town life, one stop light towns, family, friends. That's the real life. Like that's not a gimmick. That's the life that they yeah. live. Yep. Um, and there's it's so approachable and generous, and it's made me just love this even more. It's such a thrill to be able to get to know everybody on a more yeah. personal human level. I think that's, that's really well put, well said. And, um, I, I say that to people when, you know, why did you get into country music and uh, as, as opposed to, you know, whatever el- other genre, I mean, number one, I, I can't sing anything but, but country music with this voice. <laughs> but, I mean, I could, but it would be a little wacky. Um, but too, I mean, it, to your point, I mean, it's genuine, it's authentic, and the 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 artists, for the most part, I mean, you got turds and everything, but sure. they, are are authentic and genuine, and you know, I mean, so that, that's that's really cool. Even from my perspective, I mean, I'm still a fan. Just because I do this for a living doesn't make me not a fan of all these people, you know. And I'm still like, damn, that was cool. That that was cool. That so and so was so cool to me. Yeah. You yeah. know, I can't, you know, even at this point, I'm 15 years into my career. So that makes well, total sense. It was like the sense. other week I saw, like, you know, I, I, I was joking about it earlier, but it happened. Like, you know, Blake Shelton came up on your bus to hang at a show that you were you were uh, yeah. on the same bill as he was. And, like, Blake's as big as anyone has ever been, you know, yeah. and bigger than country music in some ways with all the stuff that he's been doing with the voice and oh, yeah. married to Gwen Stefani. Oh, yeah, that's And huge. there are a lot of headlining acts who wouldn't necessarily take the time to go do that and spend that time with, with people that are playing before them. And he did yeah, that. I exactly, thought that was really cool. Yeah, you're exactly right, man. It's um, He and I met, I don't know, I think we actually met through Miranda initially because she and I were really good friends, have been for – I don't know, 10, 12 years, whatever. Because, a matter of fact, one of the Paisley uh, tours I did, she was middle act on, I was opening act. That, that may be where we oh, uh, wow. initially met. Something like that. That's a great line. And so it was a long time ago, you know. And then I went on two or three of her tours with her, you know. Anyway, I think I met him through her, and then I went on tour with him, and we became – really good buddies and and you know again you're talking a decade ago or something like that but where i'm going with that 10 12 years ago blake 
uh, who's had an amazing run since then. And he was huge at the time, but it's only grown. Uh, his career is the exact same Blake that we saw a week or two ago, uh, you know, yeah. and that kind of brings it full circle to the, the initial conversation is, you know, the, the thing about country music that's so cool 90% of the time. So, but getting off the hangover and, and music. So Kurt has a, a real job too. Like, and it's, <laughs> it's a high ranking, uh, you know, important job so I, I i don't know if you want to touch on what you do for an actual living um and then <laughs> for now you know, for and now then, and then how the morning maybe, hangover blow that's because that's my next question which one you which one are you gonna do forever which one do you like <laughs> well, the, the most <laughs> well and i'm, well, I'm kind of curious uh, the the dynamic between the two like yeah how much time do you have to devote to this before you can devote some to that and um, cause yeah. it's gotta be tough. So, you know, I, so I know a I, lot I, of yeah. fun, but also somewhat difficult to maybe maneuver both at the same time. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's like, so yeah, as I, said, I live in Washington, DC, you know, I, I, I work in the political world. Uh, I'm, I, I'm, I'm a consultant to, you know, a lot of you know political <laughs> figures and I'm on, uh, you know, MSNBC almost every day at this point, uh, talking about whatever's going on. And, you know, it, it is a balance. You know, I, I always joke that when I'm out here in Nashville, that this is like my therapy. Like, this feeds my soul. Being able to do this, being able to, you know, watch in the same night Brad Paisley, Darius Rucker, Scotty McCreary, you know, perform. Uh, and then, you know, on Thursday, I'll go back to my normal life uh, in, in Washington, which is, you know, very different. It, it's different, too, because, and, and Justin will appreciate this, you know, in that world, I, I'm part talent too. Uh, right. you know, it's like I, I'm, you know, it's not the same as performing in front of twenty thousand people in an amphitheater. But when you're on TV, there is that performance element. Yeah, it's only it. millions watching, man. Yeah, exactly. That's not <laughs> so, you know, um, you know, and you get and, and and people feel like they know you when they see you that frequently. I, I, you know, yeah. especially when I'm out in california or new york city or dc it's like you do come across people who recognize you who want to talk to you and they they feel like they have a relationship with you even though i've never met them in my life right uh, and and you always get that you know are you that person and you're kind of like this is either going to go really good or it could go really bad i don't know if i want to say i'm that person um well, i'll tell you what i respect cool. about that from the the ta you know you touching on the talent uh standpoint um or that perspective is because it's kind of easy to do what we do. I mean, we go out there and everybody's there because they definitely want to see you. And it's just to have fun, sing songs. You know, it's easy. I mean, I mean, every now and then I could say something stupid that I go, I shouldn't have said that or whatever. But, <laughs> but what you guys do, man, and, and, and ladies do, um, and it's regardless which side of the aisle you're on it, um, politically, that's beside the point. I mean, you're, you got to be on, man, and and just yeah. Uh, you, uh, it's like every word, you, every phrase, every, yeah. Especially in this era, of social media. My you God. can't, you yeah, can't, you can't swing man. and miss. I mean, yeah. you know, and and say, I mean, you can say something to ruin your career in five seconds. I mean, yeah, it, it, yeah. So I, that's got to be, I that that's got to be a grind. But I don't want to throw well, you I, off topic. It, but I just wanted no, to no, say no, how much I respect that too. as a guy who don't do that for a living but <laughs> you, you sometimes have to measure your words you know in yeah. certain environments to do that like daily i can't i mean my anxiety anxiety would be through the roof <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah i mean what's been really cool uh, having kind of this dual life of, of one part in country music one part in politics dc and media uh, is i've had some really neat opportunities to kind of bring those worlds together um you know i think about one of my big frustrations is I feel like country music gets a bad rap from the mainstream media because no one in the mainstream media has ever been to a country music concert. They don't understand anything. You're right. You know, they don't but, understand it. Yeah. You know, and so I try to, with my role in DC and the profile and visibility that I have to be an advocate for this community. Uh, great example. When, when that tragic Vegas shooting happened at that route 91 festival in Vegas, I started seeing all kinds of people, you know, <laughs> shooting their mouth off about how, well, country music is gun culture, and this is why this happened, which is total bullshit. And I and I remember specifically, there was an LA Times writer who cited Miranda Lambert's song "Gunpowder and Lead," 
And it was so clear to me they had never heard the song because that song, by the way, is about a woman leaving an abusive relationship. Right. Uh, and, and so I, you know, I wrote a column uh, for USA Today rebutting it, saying, "Listen, you guys don't know what you're talking about. Country music is not about." I remember that. that. Mm-hmm. And you know, and I went on that week. I went on CNN, MSNBC, talking about it as trying to be that ambassador for format for country music mm-hmm. because they don't have anyone here that can that really walks through that world every day that can just call that out with credibility and it's been really neat to be able to try to do that and the feedback i get from everybody in nashville when things like that happen it is really really positive and you know to me country music is a way to bring people together i don't care like you said whatever your politics are whatever your beliefs are who you like who you love you know i've had shows where i've brought you know our good buddy john reedy who who works for the other side for me he's one of my (laughs) best buddies in the world um you know I, i you know dana perina Karina, good friend of mine, former yeah. White House press secretary, has her own show on Fox. Like another, you know, friend of mine, supporter of mine, reads the Morning Hangover. It's like right. we can bring people together this way too. Yeah, we've had those point. conversations. I mean, even on the bus. I mean, mm-hmm. about you know, not everybody has to see the world through the same lens. Uh, I mean, you know, I mean, and you can still get along and. Actually enjoy each other's company, <laughs> you know. Totally, just, uh, yeah. I mean, that's <laughs> right. So, but but you know, most people, to your point about country music, just see us as the the dumb hillbillies, and the you know, I mean, that's the stereotype, obviously, which is fine, whatever. But I mean, it's it's kind of nice to um, to have somebody in our corner, such as yourself, who can go, man, I've had you know, meaningful. Uh, good conversations with some of these people and they're not just all you know ignorant backwoods uh right. hillbillies well, you know and that's the thing too, they're like actually some I'm of in... us some of us are actually somewhat well read <laughs> you know <laughs> i have not said all so of many us times but... i have said so many times to people in washington <laughs> and, you know and, and and this i'm gonna say this and this isn't a a statement or judgment about donald trump but it's an example I tell them, if you don't understand why Donald Trump won in 2016, go to a country music concert and look around and just see what people are responding to and mm-hmm. understand that nobody in the Democratic Party was talking to those people at all right? in any way. Like, you can't ask someone to support <laughs> you if you're not willing to meet them where they are. It just doesn't right. work that way. And if the first thing out of your mouth when you meet someone is, here's why you're wrong and why you're an idiot – guess what? They're probably not going to like what you have to say. They're not going to hear anything beyond no. that. It drives so. me nuts, man. I, I, I tell people, get out of the Beltway. Get out of D.C. Go to places like, have any of you been to a one stoplight town? I, I, you know, I lived for two years in a, in a town called Tehachapi that literally had one freaking stoplight yeah. uh, you know, uh, in, in that Bakersfield, California area. And it is a different way of life. And, and you, you got to know how to talk to people like that because Guess what? Their opinion and their experience is just as meaningful and just as real as people who live in Chicago or Boston or New York or LA. Right. right. Well, it's like it's like you say that if you're going to get a grasp on like I wouldn't know about that culture because I don't spend a whole <laughs> lot of time in a big city. You know, I mean, yeah, it's Nashville, a day here, so, there, two or three days yeah, here, yeah, there. You know. Yeah, and Nashville's a big town now, but it's it wasn't when I lived there. In New or- I lived on the outskirts of New Orleans, so it's I've never lived in one of those towns. And that would be the same as them trying to know what, as you were saying, country music where we go play. We play all these state fairs and county fairs all over the country in rural mm-hmm. America to to know what if those for those to think the same are going to have the same things going on in their day to day life. It's just I mean there are a lot of the same problems, but it's just two different worlds you know and you wouldn't expect one to know about the other as you would this one to know about that one you know i wish uh, every politician i don't care what party i wish every politician went on the fairs and festival circuit that you guys have to go through i mean think yeah. about it that's 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 it that's the that's the veins of america right there all through these every state yeah. and most of them are, are similar it's just rural people working people you know the fair and comes once that, a year not a lot people to, that, you know that bust their ass on a daily basis and care about not only their their um local areas and states but this country you know and anyway i didn't want to dive off into politics with you but yeah. i just wanted people to know what you did for a living uh, yeah at least no, no. from and, a and to answer your thousand question foot too, view JR, um, you know, like if i had to pick one or the other it would definitely be morning haver i say like, that's, that's what i'm what talking I, about that's what i'm going to spend the, hopefully the rest of my life yes. doing is so, yes. building so it, this at this yes. point, do you have like three thousand employees or something with the morning hangover <laughs> to, to help you run this ship? 
uh, people would be what, shocked about what, this. What are the logistics of making what you make happen happen, and how many people does it take? So, true story, it's just me right now. Like I do, I, 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 it is a one man enterprise, which will not be the case much longer. But I, again, See, I I'm surprised that, long- that it's still that. Um, I mean, I know you you started that way, but that, that's interesting. It's like I like I write the email personally <laughs> every night. I write it and put it out. Um, you know, I do all the social media content is me doing it um, because I think that like, again, it's fun for me. You know, yeah. like this 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 really is turning your hobby into your own job. I created right. this. And I get to go and do these amazing things and experience country music in the most unique way possible. Um, and I love sharing that with people and with fans. And I think that we're, we're, we're kind of getting into a new phase of this now. Uh, we had a big milestone a couple months back, uh, the night before the ACM Awards in Vegas. I had my first show, called it Hangover Fest. We sold out the House of Blues. I uh, had 18 artists play this show. Dustin Lynch, Good Scott night. McCurry, Jordan Davis, Hardy, um, Laney Wilson. It was it was it was the coolest thing I've ever done in my life. Um, awesome. How, what someone who? Would you do one song a piece or something? Uh, so for the new acts, they did one song. So like Connor Smith did a song, for instance, and then yeah. for more established acts, they did three songs. Nice. Wow. Uh, Thanks for hey, the invite. <laughs> <laughs> You're playing the the next one in Texas, buddy. I'm kidding. ACM Texas. I'm kidding. Uh, and the great thing about it, you know, I always say, put on the show that you would want to go to. And the lineup, the way that I did it, was having a major name play every 40 minutes, not just stack them all at the end. You know, I had, I think, uh, Jordan Davis went on at like show started at eight. I had him on at eight thirty. Then I had Scotty McCreary on at like nine ten, and just really. St- Staggered to Stagger. keep the energy really high, and it was yeah. it was so cool. And, and the artists were great. I got to tell you, none of the artists were like, "Well, why am I pit playing third and not fifth? And all, like everybody was just very chill. And we do cool. that, by the way. Even even if you don't have an ego, I mean, I'll I'll be honest, and we all do that. I mean, every one <laughs> of us, you know, because right. you you get to a certain point and you go, "Well, I will play this before this guy or girl." But I'm not going to play before so and so. I mean, that's just mm-hmm. part of it. I mean, I don't. I guess it is ego, but um, well, it's protecting. Anyway. It's protecting your spot you know, and a brand, and, 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 you and know. a brand. But like everybody involved understood the logic of, of how right. I stack the lineup. They right. got like, and they understood that hey, whoever comes after Jordan Davis, the newer act. We'll we'll get that benefit of the higher energy from the crowd now mm-hmm. versus everyone. You know you know how it is when you're just <laughs> as a, as a fan watching for an hour. People you don't really know that well yet. You might know right. one, one of their songs, but like the energy kind of stays a little flat. And, I, and and as as a fan first, I wanted a different experience, and it was really cool. I mean, it especially was so if awesome. you have that many acts, I mean, you almost have yeah. to do that. You know, yeah, I gotta say, eighteen was a little ambitious. I probably wouldn't do that. <laughs> it, 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 uh, it, it didn't start out that way, but. Again, this is such a, a compliment, really, for what we felt. When the word got out that we were doing this, we just kept having people call us and ask, hey, even if we can just do one song, can we get in on this? And and I was like, yeah, let's do it. Um, yep. It, it was the, such a great moment. You know, my favorite moment of that night was an hour before the show. You know, and, and when you're putting on a show, your biggest fear is like no one's going to be there. <laughs> right. And I, I, I walked out of the of, of the House of Blues. It was in the Mandalay Bay Hotel there. And there was a line going around the casino an hour before doors opened. I was like, oh, thank God they came. Like, yeah. that, wow. it was the coolest feeling. Did uh, So is this, I mean, and you don't have to answer any of this if you don't want to. Did you promote it yourself or did you get yeah. a third party or? This was this was wow. this was and did morning people, hangover. Was it a paid event or did, was it free or what? Oh, it was ticketed. Man, yep. Yep. were you a genius? Uh, yeah, I don't think absolutely. I'm that. Uh, <laughs> How many millions of right, dollars right did you right personally time. make off this show? <laughs> That's what everybody really wants to know. <laughs> I didn't make a dime off of this show. I donated. <laughs> I'm, I'm I donated kidding. all the proceeds to the ACM Lifting Lives program. Actually. There you go. I, there I'm you kidding go. with you. Hey, you know, we them. raised about we raised like 150 grand for them. That's awesome, man. That's, yeah. that's, very, that's very cool. And that's the other thing, the other part of, of country music that uh, that I don't know gets enough light a lot of times. How how active uh, the acts and the the genre as a whole is in uh, um, 
philanthropies and things like yeah. that where oh, we can yeah. help stuff. I mean, it's, you know, I, I, <laughs> Uh, I, I just saw an email. We got back from some stuff that we had done for Justin St. Jude stuff, and the number I was just like, man, mm -hmm. this is racking up. Like you're saying, that if every one of these events, you know, I know, you know, people have their golf tournaments for different events and do this, and I mean, the, there's one you, know, you could go to about every week. I yeah. mean, we pretty yeah. much all have one for something. I mean, yeah, you know, and then or the times, multiple. And then the time going to the places and the outreach stuff and the and the fan interaction, mm -hmm. bringing people to shows and all that stuff that that's um, that's cool. And like you said, that's the pictures you get to see, and that's the ones you'll post. Oh, good moment for this. Um, and that work. Hey, I want to uh, change gears a little bit since we were talking about acts and you had the the, the show there uh, and music a little bit. Um, you get to see a lot of acts. That's why a lot of times yeah. I hit the morning hangover because us on tour unless we do a show with somebody rarely do i get to see shows outside of the, the shows that we do so unless we have newer acts or uh you know festivals and things like that i don't always get to see outside of some social stuff or things like the morning hangover or uh, the few fingers i have out there that give me the info for who i need to be listening to for what genres and what areas and stuff um but of, of the travels and we're just do it this past year because i know i mind change every six eight months when i see a new act that i really like <laughs> over the past just say um you know since we've been back out on the road just say this past year and maybe the end of last year who is there, is mm -hmm. there a handful or two of young acts that you're really like man these they're gonna i think they could really do something yeah i'll tell you uh, the first name that comes <clears throat> to mind uh i got to watch him for the first time he was he opened for tr at a show in philly he's actually now out on tour with tr but connor smith who's on the same label as it turns out as justin mm -hmm. but like this kid just blew me away. I have never seen an opening act get that kind of reception and have that energy and stage presence. And he's just a kid. He's like 21 years old or yeah. something. Um, he is outstanding. Like he, he he's really a guitar has. slinger, isn't he? Or am I yeah, mixing oh yeah, he, him he, up he, with somebody he, else? He, he, no, he, does. he opened for us in um, maybe Kansas City or somewhere uh, um, last year, Justin, into okay. last year. Yeah, that's and, what I um, thought. Yeah. And Tanner, who used to be my assistant tour manager and our merch manager, is working for him now. That's um, yeah, that's right. But that's the only time <laughs> that we got to see him. And, and, and I think I'm right here because, again, I don't follow as tight as I should. Isn't he the one that's got the song about hating Alabama? Yes, I hate Alabama. Yeah, yeah, see, yeah. see, that's all you got to do. Hate on the champ. Everybody loves you. See how easy it is? See, I'm not saying that's not his, he's a one-trick pony, but I'm just saying that's a pretty <laughs> easy gimmick yeah, yeah, Pretty easy right. gimmick to sell because everybody hates Bama right now. But I don't hate Georgia after last year. But anyway, I kid, I kid. I, I thought he was cool that night. He was a great kid. I, I hope to see him again sooner, but – um i pick but that okay i'm putting just putting two and two together that's good to know okay yeah connor smith site label mate hope he's, to get through some shows with him. i also too i, I gotta say I, I'm, I'm i like this uh girl over at curb records her name's hannah ellis uh like i think that she's got a lot of potential um she's just out with new music recently so she, she's starting to get out there a little bit more i've always been a fan of the runaway june girls um mm. you know i i think they have such a great sound they just um, played a show real. with us, and, yeah. and Jr. Uh, mentioned how great they sounded. Their new, the yeah. new lineup is on fire. The Stevie and yeah, with the, uh, and, and I, I just I mean, saw, uh, and I just saw Jen Wayne last night too. I was catching up with her, and you know, they. I just think it's country music. You know, yeah. it's like, we don't have as much of that as we should, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, something that I, I talk a lot about in general with the Morning Hangover. It's like you know, there's a lot of real country music and when i look at the chart sometimes that the you know, the, who, the top 30 chart or whatever like there are some things on there that aren't country music in my opinion not that they're bad not, i have nothing against them god bless them like but i i want to no, see I mean, more country music artists get recognized for putting out country music right i couldn't agree more on that you ain't wrong but uh yeah and I'll, I'll i'll say that yeah we saw we did a show with them recently and i think the new lineup i mean they were they were awesome and uh and you're right they're definitely just just good country natalie sawing away on the fiddle yeah good stuff oh yeah, uh, yeah. say natalie that's right yep yeah i know uh, i've been she i can remember when i was with party years ago we, you know we'd cross paths she'd be playing out in front of some event or something just it was just working i told her that last time she'd worked and that it paid off you know now she's on the circle channel yeah. and all the shows and and runaway june's rocking so um yeah. well that's that's cool because it's always good to know and we try to drop on here and we try to have some when we when we meet um new acts that we're buddies with that um uh, to make sure to drop a spotlight on them because you know you can always talk about yeah. the, the, the you know people who's got that we a go killer voice with. that i heard the other day at, at, at my neck of the woods is uh, this kid jackson dean 
just has a killer I've, voice. I've like, heard I've it. heard comparisons, and I've also heard someone say he and Justin songs, the kind of songwriting style, might be similar, or some of the song stuff. Somebody I have to check it out. I mentioned that. Um, Blue yeah, I just my saw mind. he's out on tour with. Uh, I just saw he was going out on tour with somebody. I saw it on yeah. the Hangover recently. But uh, <laughs> how many shows you go to a year, Kurt? Oh, I mean, on oh average. man, God, I probably geez somewhere between. 60 and 80 probably so about the same amount as us yeah basically. <laughs> you need to just get a tour bus a morning hangover tour bus that will work, happen one day working on you happen one day working there you go it. are it's, you gonna get um, are you gonna make it a blue corvette to match paisley's red corvette uh <laughs> bus and stuff, jet matching jets <laughs> yeah You're well the You're the, the, the um the funny thing and we got to give you some crap about this because we always do it in person the thing we <laughs> Kurt somehow goes on more guy trips, and a lot of them are just concerts. But uh, and remains married. I, I don't. I don't. I don't know what the. Can you can you give us the uh, the secret there, or did you just find the most patient woman in the world to marry you, or or what? <laughs> Well, obviously, I'm like really good in bed. That goes. No, right. <laughs> well, <laughs> and after last well, time obviously. we, yeah, and then last time we saw him, she wasn't with. It was him and John Knucklehead John Reddy. But uh, <laughs> but the next week, you were taking her on some cool trip somewhere. Oh off, yeah, and that's I was true. like, I was like, that's I how you get to go that. on this because next week you're going to somewhere awesome that's on a the trip. Thing. It, it, like it, it's making the time <clears throat> to make sure that she's taken care of, that we have fun adventures and. Uh, but I tell you, I, I'm very. I, I hit the lottery here. Like, my, I, I definitely I'll kick my coverage. Uh, my wife is awesome. She is chill. She has not a jealous bone in her body. <laughs> um, she's very much like you do your thing. Like, I don't need to be a part of everything you do. Not over controlling. Um, yeah. And and I think she like for her and, and she sees how much joy this stuff brings me, and she's happy. Like it's kind of like right. if I'm happy, you're happy. And, right. Uh, uh, and the key thing too is she's always invited. She's always invited. Like for whatever I'm doing, I'm like if you 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 are always welcome to be there. But most of the time, she wants to, she's got things going on. She she has her life, and uh, you know. But good example. I'm in Nashville right now doing my thing, and then next week we're we're gonna go to Florida for four days and chill. Sleep. There you go. That's how. What you does do she it, do balance. for a living, Kurt? I don't think I've ever asked. Uh, so you she. That. she so she works for uh, it's called it's a government agency called the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration NOAA. Yeah. So things like the National Weather Service are under their purview. Um, gotcha. A lot of stuff with like weather, hurricanes, climate, that kind of thing. So y'all probably met in that arena then the the political Actually, world. We met uh, at a mutual friend's wedding in California. Oh, wow. Uh, and she didn't want to talk to any of her old high school people that were there because she doesn't care about them. And uh, she recognized me from the, the, the girl's wedding was a coworker of mine and uh, just was like, hey, like you, I know you, you live in D.C. like I do. And we just kind of talked and then I harassed her the entire wedding. I literally just followed <laughs> her around everywhere. Uh, well, it worked. Made her apparently, give me her I did the same thing to my wife. <laughs> yeah. He did. And, I mean, yeah. She broke. She broke up with me twice in the beginning. Like in the first three months that we dated, she dumped me twice. Um, but uh, but kept. But but I kept persisting. I was like, I was I was certain. I was certain fairly immediately that this was the one for me, and right. so I just wouldn't let it go. So I obviously wore her down. Yeah, Jr. Jr. did the same thing at a. It was a friend's wedding, wasn't it? Yeah. JR? Was my buddy? Yeah, it was my buddy. And she wedding. kept she kept like turning you down and stuff. <laughs> yeah, I just chased her around to she uh, war, war she had good instincts. There. Right. Good instincts. Yeah. Hey, talking about going back to Cali, and I know you got to go because I know you got a million other things to do while you're in town. But uh, talking about going back to Cali, and she's from Cali as well. Yeah, she's from wine country. Is that gotcha. where you're from? Sonoma. Yeah, you're from San Diego. San Diego. Hey, I don't even know if I we've ever Fresno talked about for that. Some reason. If we did, it was. Probably too many drinks in or something. I, so, I know. Yeah. I know. Kurt Not and a terrible I have place to grow up in San Diego, huh? No, I, I mean we hit the geographic lottery. Like you know, like we'll do you know Thanksgiving in San Diego, then Christmas in Sonoma, or it's yeah, it's no great. kidding. How about that? That's that's awesome. 
Right. Yeah, I, I know Kurt and I talked about that because I can remember early on we were talking about how, the, like you said, people and their perceptions and things like that, and we we did, we laughed about the proverbial, "Hey, where are you from?" And you're like, "San Diego." Mm. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. And, uh, and but I, for some reason, I thought it was Fresno area. But that's another thing I was going to ask you when we were talking about something earlier. Um, when you go back home, because it's, it's kind of like just when you go back home, is does anybody uh, know you back home as much, or, or or is it easier to blend in back home easier than it is to say in DC or out and about? You know, now honestly, <clears throat> it, it is a little bit more challenging to to just kind of blend back in because um, you get the thing where like even you know my family's friends like watch the news a lot, and so right they. they like they see me a little bit differently now or uh you know my my, my wife's friends they watch me it, it, so yeah. there's a little bit of that that's a little bit different than it used to be um and it's that age we're in that age too because you're you're a little younger than i am but it, it, we're all about the same age but you're, we're in that age too where all of our friends watch the news <laughs> all the time all of our parents watch the news all yeah. the time and it's like so for me i have to be more polite than i would normally be right <laughs> when i'm home <laughs> Which can be a little bit of a pain, but because uh, be I, I, I'll be the first to say I can be a real jerk sometimes. I can be a real asshole. How old uh, are you? Thirty-eight. I'll be thirty-nine next month. Okay, we're the same age. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's what I was. I swear, well, that's the other thing I was going to get to um, is our um, and I, we'll do this first, and then we'll talk about some uh, some other music stuff. But here on the Justin Moore podcast, as you know, Kurt, because you're an avid listener and you never miss an episode, and you click subscribe and download <laughs> each and every week, you hit the notification button, you follow us on YouTube, you do all that fun stuff. I do. You I go do to jrthehandler.com, you order shirts for all your friends for their birthdays, you order <laughs> VIP packages from Justin's website and pre-order all his albums on justinmoremusic.com. Uh, Don't forget but what the vinyl. We, yeah, we got to get the vinyl, yeah. Walmart exclusive. Um, but here on the Justin Moore podcast, every week we do a thing called birthday number one. It's the number one song in country music on the day you were born. So oh. you are a, uh, uh, tell me if I'm wrong here, you're an October 23rd, 82 model. Is that correct? Uh, close. October twenty second, eighty three. Oh, see, I'm a little off. I yeah. got to go back to the well here. Okay, see, off that's why one you day, one year. That's why yeah, you don't trust say, Wikipedia. He's got to be he's gotta be eighty three because I'm I'm eighty four, early eighty four. Yeah. So it's so um, did you graduate high school in 02? 01. Okay. Last you know, two thousand one. So you would have been young. young. I was 17. You would have been young. I was seventeen yeah. when I graduated high school. Because because I'm March of eighty four and O two. Like I, I, and my I, like, wife I, I is. Bo- no, I was, I was, my wife is July of eighty three, and she graduated in 02. Yeah, so yeah. it just I, whenever I you started, yeah. where I started just a little bit earlier. Yeah, that's why my son just started kindergarten, and he just turned five, so he's going to be easily like the youngest one in his class. He probably yep. should have waited a year, but so you're October twenty second, eighty three. Yes, sir. All right, here we go. Let's see what the number one song in country music that day was. Oh classic um does anybody want to take a stab i'll i'll give this out it's a group kurt can go first it's a group okay it's not it's not the it's alabama that'd be that'd be the band that would be the band alabama one on that one not not a bad decision to pick any Alabama song as being a group number one in the eighties because they had yeah, a no, ton. Yeah, true. <laughs> but uh, does anybody want to take a stab at the song? This is October twenty second, uh, eighty three. Uh, so it's cool outside. This might be kind of a song. Lady uh, down on love. There you go. Bingo. Whoa. There you well go. Well done. Rain That's man good, over there. Good teamwork there. there. Hey, and, uh, I, just, I just named my favorite ballad of the uh, and and uh, well, and you know because Justin's birthday uh, is March uh, eighty four, uh, and the number one song that week was "Roll On Eighteen Wheeler Alabama." Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that we were only talking that was about probably five, they were probably back to back singles if you had to if I had to bet. Yep. Yeah. yeah. The time that right. Any, yeah. any excuse to talk about Alabama, right, right Jr. It, yeah. it, I don't even do it. It just happens. It just happens. How convenient. It's like, it's yeah, like it yeah, my, my, my facial hair, same thing. It just grows all white trashy like this. I don't even have to do anything to it. It just looks like this. Uh, you know, but anyways. You know what we, we, you know we got to talk about real quick, too, before yes. we go, is, is the ongoing but never achieved or realized basketball grudge match. Yeah, I was going to mention all. the basketball. So, Kurt played basketball. You played in high school, right? Yeah. And and um, and still plays. 
uh, and JR and I both played in high school, and, and we don't really still play, but I know every now and then team. when we get a, a burst of energy, uh, which is rare, we like to go. I, I actually, as a matter of fact, I shot at the house the other day, just shot. I didn't run around or anything. Uh, but yeah, we've we've talked we've been friend uh, in a friendly fashion talking smack to each other about playing a game or horse or something. So we got to make that happen next time you come out on the road or something, or we're all in Cause, Nashville cause, or because I insist and I say this publicly and on the record <laughs> that I will whoop your asses. Kurt Kurt Period. thinks in a three point contest he's gonna beat me and Justin like it ain't nothing. And I just I'm baffled at how he comes up with this, but I hey, okay, we're gonna find out one just day. Another hey. day at the office for me. I he's love confident. It. I love he it. is confident. Hey, who uh who are some other Maybe good you just hoopers? have to come to Arkansas and we'll play at my house. Just stay at the house for a couple oh, nights. Home, home court advantage over here. Look at this guy. <laughs> Hey, I got to I got to do everything I can, man. Yeah. Hey, so yeah, have you have you who are there some guys out on the road you've played with that can hoop? Uh, you know, okay, so folks I know that can hoop. Uh, Jimmy Allen's a baller. Uh, yeah. I heard Brown, I keep hearing that. I keep hearing Ashley that. Gorley. Oh, yeah, uh, I've played with Ashley before. Oh, yeah, really? He can play. You know, he, wow. Yeah, he's got he's his got own set up at his at his house. Yeah, he's got it's his own University who, of Kentucky court and all it's that. It's always his funny house. who you find out who's who can hoop. And only people yep. who can yeah. hoop can say who can hoop. I mean, I, I'm right, one right. that people I'm sure is shocked by. You know what I mean? Like, like really? They shouldn't be. They should, well, I'll tell you, you like, there's a, there's, there's a clip of, of you shooting around <laughs> in one of your music videos. That's <laughs> my last day. And I remember the first it time was, I saw that actually. video. And I thought, man, Justin's got good form on his jump shot. I was surprised. I'm like, okay, yeah. he can ball. He's legit. Yeah. So... Yep. Yeah, but yeah, it's interesting. So I interrupted to know, you because I know a lot of people play out, but it's interesting to know who can really play. Because a lot of times it's just for exercise, and most of us it's just yeah, for yeah. exercise. But there are some that played and can still play and stuff. Um, so that's always neat. No, we're gonna have to have that country music. Uh, <clears throat> hey, what uh, we need big, to do? Big three tournament. What or we need to do is we need to uh, Justin Moore slash uh, Morning Hangover uh, three on three tournament. Yep. Maybe maybe it's at. The ACMs, or maybe it's uh, do it there, like fan you know, fair. We should, do, is, we should do it there in CMA Fest, like they CMA do that Fest, softball yeah. game every I keep year. saying fan we fair. Do, that's, that's how everyone still says it. I know, that right? would be that would Me be too. fun, man. We could we could do that, raise money for charity. Yeah, <clears throat> do it for St. Jude or something. That'd like be that'd fun. be a blast. Mm-hmm. All right, so we yeah, got to get the gym. We got to get the gym, right. Just. We got some rig rust or oh, some yeah. floor rust. I know. Hey, give, me a, June. give me a year. <laughs> yeah, all right. A year from June. Or I guess yeah. that is close to a year. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Get, get it back. Training. I want to see the training videos, JR, yeah. like Rocky style. Hey, We're going to bring D- DDP, of, DDP out on the road with us. Yeah. He's motivated. Yeah, DDP Spe- yoga. Speaking of sports, though, like D- I, I'm assuming you're a big Chargers fan and Padres fan. Actually, Being, I'm not. Um, no, okay. Like my, my, so my sports allegiances are, are kind of all over the place. So my childhood, actually, I grew up in Rochester, New York. Um, okay. And so I'm a big Buffalo Bills fan. Okay. Because I came up at the time when we it was the Jim Kelly, Andre Reid, Thurman oh, Thomas yeah. era. Yeah. Um, Bruce Smith. And Bruce, yeah, four Super Bowls in a row that we lost. <clears throat> um, unbelievable. And then That sounds like a I, Razorback team or something. So we didn't really yeah. get to there, but – and then basketball, uh, this is where I, 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 I discovered basketball when I was in Southern California, so I'm a big Lakers guy. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you big Kobe guy? Yep. I mean, how couldn't you be, you know? Right. Uh, I think people, even myself, like I'm not a Lakers fan, but I mean, I love Kobe Bryant. I mean, yep. he you know, right true down. story, Always did. Uh, and it's fitting because today, you know, <laughs> as we're having this conversation, it's, uh, it's, it's 824, it's Kobe day. And oh, wow. I uh, – I, I once guessed his email address and sent him an email, and he actually responded to me, which oh blew me away. Oh, my God. You got to you gotta wow. give that story. Um, I, uh, as much you as know, you, this was, you feel like. This was, after, this was after he had retired, and I had read that his foundation was interested in getting involved in some uh, you know, kind of social justice stuff and you know, being in D.C., it's like, hey, like, I, I think I could probably be helpful at just giving advice about how you might want to go about doing that. And so I just sent him an email and said, hey, like, you don't know me, but like, this is who I am. And uh, 
uh, I read this and I'm based in Washington, D.C., working politics and media. And if I can ever be a sounding board for you, like uh, I, I have some ideas and <clears throat> much to. And this is the only time in my life I've ever been starstruck by email. I was standing <laughs> in John Loba's office uh, wow. at, 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 at BBR and he wrote me back and I literally went, holy shit. And Loba's like, what, what? Like Kobe Bryant just emailed <laughs> me back. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. So did y'all build a relationship? So we or... started like kind of exchanging emails and then I, I got connected <clears throat> as well with the head of his um, empire, uh, who was also a country music fan, by the way. Uh, she was a huge, uh, big Florida Georgia line fan, go figure. Wow. And so we kind of bonded over that and have, again, country music, man, you can find common ground wow. with anybody with country music. Um, and, you know, like had some back and forth. And then unfortunately, uh, he, he would. Wow. wow. Well, the, the, um, the more disturbing part about this is, um, you, do you have some sick, um, uh, trend where you just try to guess people's uh, email addresses all the time and, and actually succeed? Yes. I was going to add, <laughs> yeah, my, my next one is. If you, you ever get George Strait to get it right, give it to me. I mean, I was, it could be kinggeorge at gmail.com for all I know. You know? Right. Like, <laughs> well, I need, well, hey, well, maybe you, since you're the expert on uh, um, on sleuthing on that angle, maybe you can help Brent Long and I and, and, the, and the thousands of people in this country figure out who the uh, fake Latrell Sprewell guy is that's been trying to <laughs> oh talk to God. everybody for the last <laughs> that's couple so years. Good. Dude, I Do listen you know to Robert or- about this. I listen to the Robert Ory podcast, Kurt. and he talks about it all the yeah. time too. And he's like, "I know Spree well. This is not that." So I've had this it confirmed. Not, no. I've had it confirmed from people outside. I knew it was BS early on. I told I was one of the first ones to call BS, but then I've had it confirmed well, by because I, I his passed buddy. your number along to him. I was going yeah. bulls hell. I go, dude, you're not. You're going to be so excited because it's an Alabama player. I mean, you know, yeah. in our era, Latrell Sprewell's big name, you know, and I'm like. Dude, totally. you're never going to believe this, JR. You're, it's, it's your lucky day. He's like, that's fake. And I go, huh? <laughs> I'm like, I thought you'd be so happy. <laughs> yeah. And it took me a while to get to get people to believe that it was even – then Brent and a couple of other TMs confirmed once I mentioned it, they called me. and Yeah, so did, did, if you, do you know what we're talking about, obviously? I do. I do. I do. You know, and also, that kind of reminds me, too, of like in our world, so uh, is that you? Like, I'm asking you all the spot. Is that you? Are you the fact that you're not playing? I'm kidding, I, am not, I am not the Latrell Sprewell. Um, <laughs> Jake Owen had the same thing. You know, like, yeah, not, on not like Jake. Twitter or whatever. Yeah. yeah. That's was, what I was going to say like, earlier. That was what I was trying hilarious. to think of. Yeah. Did we ever think or uh, find out who that was? No. Yeah. Still that was, don't know. It was some pretty funny stuff, actually. It was funny as hell. They I mean, I was even included in it. It was funny. Yeah, they had one. No, for a nobody minute. was off limits there. Oh no! Oh man! Oh, no. Brutal! Brutal! It would, no. it would have made for good uh, CMA award monologue material just to read that. Yeah, right. I, th- I think it was definitely somebody in the in the business. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Well, no it was doubt. like um, they they tried to make one for your producer Jeremy Stover. They had a, a a Jeremy Stover, not Jeremy Stover thing, and like in like the first week they realized it was Jordan Rager and Travis Denning. It was like oh, a picture yeah. of them. It was like it was like <laughs> yeah. their name behind them on one of the things or something. They're like I it's Jordan about and Travis. That. That's <laughs> funny. Like, I, I, forgot about, I forgot about that. Yeah, <laughs> that's hilarious. Denning, so, I saw him last night. He's also he, he's great. Yeah, He's but anyway, now. so uh, hopefully, uh, yeah, hope I hadn't heard from the fake Latrell Sprewell in a while, so I don't know if they have, he's given up on that gimmick. But it is crazy because I tell people on here all the time, look for the blue hashtag or the blue check mark when they're dealing with JM because people all yep. the time send me stuff of people trying to pretend like they're just and asking, I want to talk to you on the side and my management's watching my thing. This is, I mean, and then you see it on Dr. Phil and stuff. It is, it is crazy how people get sucked into these things. Oh my God. Uh, yeah. From scammers. And cause we've had to, I mean, we've had to have police there set people up that did this elaborate Tommy Chong son with a disabled kid. And they always <laughs> use a disabled kid. And we're like, man, that's double bad Ugh. trying to, you know, and yeah. stuff. And it, but it happens. I mean, all the time, all the time. You People have to be so, crazy. so, so you can't even be like Justin's excited to show me. But I'm my first instinct is it's BS till I figure out it ain't BS because I'm yeah, like, right. and then like I, and then I, and then he mark. his first text to me is, "Hey Jr., here you're an Alabama fan. This is the Alabama great Latrell Sprewell. <laughs> and I'm like, "All right, you know, I'm like, good grief, you know, I'm like, sure." 
Uh, yeah, so, like, anyway. But, uh, well, anyway, well, thanks for coming on today, Kurt. Uh, we appreciate your time. I hope everybody goes and checks out The Morning Hangover. Uh, yeah, tell. I know it's on Instagram and Twitter and all that fun stuff. What's the easiest way for everybody to sign up so they'll get the daily tip sheet? Just go to morninghangover.com. It's free for fans. Just sign up and, and follow along our adventures on Instagram, Twitter, at Morning Hangover. Yep. When are we going to see you again on the road, man? Hopefully soon. I gotta, I, I'll find a shot. Like, I, I'm one of those – there are three people mm. and only three artists that I will move heaven and earth to make sure that I see with a certain amount of regularity. And it's Justin Moore, it's uh, Dustin Lynch, and Brad Paisley. Well, That's thank good. you, man. It's uh, It's been fun to get to know each other over the years. And um, obviously I appreciate – uh, the kind words as far as my artistry goes but man it's 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 more uh important to me to call you a friend and um and even though we like to trash talk each other in person uh to each <laughs> other's face and but it's all in good fun man and hope you know oh, how much i appreciate great, yeah it's your such friendship a great brotherhood with you much J- joey g of course you know yeah. and, and reedy and, and and our and crazy don good god yep yeah, oh, yeah. That's what I was gonna say. Get ready. Three nights of Dewey Beats next year. You better rest up. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, three straight nights. How about that? I'll, you better make sure we have like an IV at the hotel for all of us. Yes. Yeah, right. We need a drip every day. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Good times. But, well, but tell man, everybody in Nashville, everything, we said, buddy. Hey. And thanks for doing this. We appreciate it. I think people are gonna enjoy it and your story and the story of how the hangover came to be. And and again, man, much love and and uh, hope to see you soon. All right, brother. Thanks for having me. Thanks, buddy. See you, Kirk. See ya. Today's episode is sponsored by Bobcat. If you're like me, you don't like to sit still for very long. You look out the window and see possibilities. What if I planted a row of trees over there? It'd be nice to clear that trail in those woods. That's why Bobcat equipment is so great. Its compact size, powerful performance, and big-time versatility will keep up with all your ideas for your property. With a few attachments or implements and a Bobcat tractor, for example, you can do big things in small amounts of time. It's perfect for me when I have a break from touring or recording. Take a look at tractors, utility vehicles, mowers, and more at bobcat.com or pay a visit to your local dealer. Hey, what's up, guys? Justin Moore here. I want to remind everyone out there listening Uh, that my wife Kate has an awesome children's clothing boutique in downtown Benton, Arkansas at Central Arkansas. So if you're local, come see us at 119 West South Street in downtown historic Benton, Arkansas. Uh, Again, that's 119 West South Street in Benton, Arkansas. And if you're not local, we ship everywhere. So uh, you can find us at shopthislittlepiggy.com and see all that we have to offer. All that my wife Kate has to offer, I should say. Facebook, you can find us at Shop This Little Piggy AR. And Instagram, you can find us at Shop This Little Piggy AR. But check us out. It's called This Little Piggy. And uh, see what we got to offer. ShopThisLittlePiggy.com. Hi, y'all. This is Brandon Bing, singer, songwriter, and whiskey maker. You're tuning into the Justin Moore Podcast. Visit EasyLiquor.com to grab your bottle of Bangtail Whiskey and join the Blue Collar Swaller family today. Follow us on all socials at Bangtail Whiskey for more news and updates. Now pour Jigger and take this a second ride with us. Hey gang, as y'all have heard, the Just More podcast has recently teamed up with Wrangler. Wrangler has been an icon in authentic American style around the world for more than 70 years. With a rich legacy rooted in the American West, Wrangler commits to offering unmatched quality and timeless design. As y'all have heard me and Justin talk about on here, George Strait, Alan Jackson, they're Wranglers. We wear Wranglers, too. Its collections are also for men and women, children, to look and feel great, inspiring those who wear them to be strong and ready for life every day. Wrangler is available in retail stores worldwide, including brand flagship stores in Denver and Dallas, department stores, mass market retailers, specialty shops, Western Outfitters, and online. For more information, visit Wrangler.com. And you know you've heard it here. And you've seen it on stage, the Justin Moore podcast. Dang glad to be partnered up with Wrangler because we're big fans and have been for a long, long time. Can't go wrong with a nice pair of Wranglers, y'all. I wear the Wrangler Retro. Uh, Justin wears the black one some. It's just it's my go-to. Uh, I get mine at Academy. So if 
you're uh, around an academy or just about anywhere, you can get you a pair of Wranglers, whether you want to look like George Strait or you want to look like JM or you want to look like me. You can get you some Wranglers, and you can do that. Whether you're in North California or South Alabama or Montana, Texas, Ohio, Wyoming, wherever, a pair of Wranglers will get the job done. Long live Cowboys and Plowboys. For more information, visit Wrangler.com. Kurt, well, there it was. Kurt Bardella. Bard, Bard, it's Bardella, right? Bardella. I always say it right, wrong, I think. Well, um, we, say, we, we say a lot of things wrong most of the time. Yeah, we do. But, yeah, he's a great guy. He, he really is. And a really, really bright guy. Um, mm-hmm. Well-spoken. Um, I mean, you, to do to do what he does for a living, you, you have to be bright and, and well-read. And, um, and, again, you got to be good under pressure. Yeah. Kind of like I said, man. It's, yeah. That's that's a I can't imagine. You know me, I I'm really good at what I do, but that that would give me so much anxiety. Oh yeah, jumping on TV every day, and you know, no matter what, you're gonna piss one side off. No matter oh, yeah, what everybody's you say. watching. I it's mean, all, it's you know, recorded everybody. and everything. You yeah, know, they're and it recorded. Lives, it lives forever on the internet or wherever. Yeah. It's and, not like hopefully nobody got that on on their, their phone. It's like oh, they're recording yeah. it up close oh, and yeah. personal. Yeah, well, yeah, and, every, a, and everybody should go check out the Morning Hangover because if you like country <laughs> music and you probably do since you're listening to this podcast, uh, it'll be a fun thing for you to catch up on every morning in your in your couple little emails. Yeah, you're it's reading just. Right. Uh, sit down and drink your coffee and you you know like i for me i mean i know i pull up i just pull up the news app on my phone that everybody has on their iphone and just kind of scroll through and that's one of the things i think i get that via email or something yep. but um but yeah it's it's uh it's something to kind of check out as you're watching the news in the morning kind of scroll through and you may you may catch something that otherwise you would have missed a show in your area an album from an artist that you you like that's coming out that you didn't know because you didn't hear it you know, on the radio when they, they were talking about it or, right exactly or whatever so yeah it's cool exactly or if you missed something the night before somebody was on <clears throat> Fallon or there was some collab on something you missed they'll have the link to that and mm-hmm. or somebody talking it's about just, something cool and he doesn't really do cool. he doesn't do kind of the 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 light and fluffy little stuff that a lot of them will do like you know like people are sitting down asking questions he'll it's more like the news news not just you know yeah anyway, i just think it's it's sense. a it's kind of cool like to think that that he went from just being a fan to now you know having this legitimate thing that that labels you know uh, use and and you know, obviously, he's generated and developed relationships with artists, and you basically he's what become a, a he's a fan that has become a legitimate part of our industry, which right, is yeah. got to be really cool for him. I mean, yeah, yeah, he, he know, and what a and what a crafty joker to figure out all the stuff he figured out how to do on his, in his spare yeah. time from his regular job. Yeah, you're a creep. Anyway. Uh, yeah, Kurt. I, barely, I barely got time to get my one job done, I, you know. <laughs> uh, so anyway, well, let's wrap this thing up. I got to get out here to the airport. It's storming again. It's not going to be fun. But um, no, I hope you ain't delayed. This uh, this podcast will, should hope if it doesn't drop tomorrow, it'll drop Friday. So as we record this Wednesday, the twenty fourth, uh, tomorrow the twenty fifth will be in Princeton, Illinois. Uh, the twenty sixth, New Haven. Kentucky, uh, the 31st uh, on base there, a big uh, thing for the military we're doing in Fort Drum, New York. Uh, then Lafayette, Indiana, Loves Park, Illinois on the 3rd. Then that's Labor Day uh, uh, that week, so everybody enjoy your Labor Day weekend. Uh, then we'll have the next weekend off. Then we'll be back on the 15th of September in Billings, Montana, the 16th, Butte, Montana, the 17th, Spokane, Washington, uh, the 23rd in Bloomsburg, Pennsylvania, and the 24th in Elmira, New York. So y'all come see us at a show like i mentioned earlier go to justinmoremusic.com uh, look at all jm's tour dates uh and see where we're going you can get links to tickets all that fun stuff but y'all come see us out on the road sometimes see the live show buy the records all that fun stuff and uh thanks for tuning in this week um and yeah, well, yeah I, I had some q i had some q a stuff we were going to do um but since for for sake of time i'll just pile them in and we'll do them next week when we got more time um but i did want to mention uh real quick um 
our, one of our sponsors. This is from Cody. Uh, he said he had breakfast with uh, my buddy Brandon Bing uh, from Bangtail Whiskey this morning, uh, and he said he's got some shirts for us that Cody's going to get to us. Cool. Um, and he said Bing gave him a bottle of the Bangtail. So uh, if this podcast doesn't get out in time, um, it's because of Brandon Bing, one of our sponsors, got, got uh, our producer drunk on um, some high-powered <laughs> whiskey. So uh, um, that'll be it. But anyway, so – I wanted to mention that. Thanks to him for uh, being a sponsor on here as well as all of our other sponsors uh, that make this go every week and all you fans out there that listen and come to Justin's shows uh, out on the road. Until next week, yeah. I'm JR, and that's JM, and uh, yeah. this Justin thanks, Moore podcast. Th thanks to Kurt from the Morning Hangover, and thank you guys, and we'll see you next week uh, on another podcast. See you. See you. This episode was brought to you by Bobcat. Check them out at bobcat.com. For any of you first-time listeners out there, at the end of each of our episodes, uh, I like to do a little reading out of a book I've had that I've got a lot of use out of over the years. Uh, the book is by Mr. Charlie Daniels, uh, and the book is called Let's All Make the Day Count, The Everyday Wisdom of Charlie Daniels. Number 51, The Holy Land. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. Genesis 12:3. The history of the rebirth of the nation of Israel is one of the most amazing stories of the past centuries. The mere fact that it exists today is a true testament that God still has his hand on his people. Isaiah 66, 8 asks, Can a country be born in a day or a nation be brought forth in a moment? Israel was indeed born in a day and brought forth in a moment. The day was May 14, 1948. The moment was when the United Nations voted to partition Palestine between the Palestinian Jews and Arabs. The entire Arab world was up in arms about the rebirth of Israel and set out to destroy the dream and drive the Jews into the sea. The attitude still exists today among many of the nations of the Middle East. The Jews of Israel fought and won wars against overwhelming odds from its inception with few and outdated weapons. In 1967, after a war that only lasted six days, the armies of Israel captured the, and reunited Jerusalem, which is the most hotly contested piece of land on planet Earth. Possession of Jerusalem will be the point of contention that triggers the last great war in human history. Modern-day Israel, in its existence, in its progress, and in its never-again will to win, should stand up as an example to the world of what can be accomplished in the face of overwhelming odds when God is with you. I had heard that a trip to Israel would change your life, and having gone three times, I can attest that it has been true in my life. Let's all make the day count.